there is a fundamental and serious problem with both the Big Bang Theory and with evolution. To explain what that problem is and why I think it exists, I must take you back to 1992 and the most important bubble bath I ever had. I was reading a very basic book about quantum mechanics. I can't remember exactly what page I was on or what I was thinking at the time, but I do remember the moment that I arrived in this universe. You see, before that bath, I was living in a very different place, where surprisingly little made sense, a place where nobody really knew anything, and a place where no truth at all could ever be found. Then, in what seemed like a second, something changed inside, and everything outside looked different, more real, more interesting. I couldn't think of anything that wasn't interesting. The colours on the surfaces of the bubbles in the bath were mesmerising to me. I remember giggling as I realised that I knew why those colours were there. For the first time in my life, I didn't feel like a fool. A few years later, a friend turned to me after watching an episode of Cosmos by Carl Sagan. She was crying. She looked confused and angry. For a few seconds, I didn't understand. And then she asked me the saddest question I ever heard. But it was a question I instantly remembered asking myself over and over back in that bubble bath. And a few years after this, and I'm on the phone to my girlfriend and we're talking about special relativity. That's right, I know what the lady's like. When there's this sudden and prolonged silence on the other end of the line. And the next thing I hear is that same question again. I can't tell if she's laughing or crying. It sounds like both. So on three occasions I've been present when somebody caught a glimpse of the universe, not through a telescope, but with their mind. Photos are beautiful and revealing, but the nature and scale of the cosmos are not things you can see with your eyes. They can only be seen, and even then, only partially and fleetingly, in your mind, and only then, after you've learned enough. Sadly, there aren't that many people who've experienced it compared to the number that could actually experience it, and fewer still have seen it happen to two others. It doesn't make me an expert, but I think it's at least interesting that all three experiences had marked similarities. It can only be called a revelation. It happens suddenly, without any warning, and it doesn't last long. Maybe you'll just be daydreaming when out of nowhere a new realisation comes to you that explains something you never understood before, that in turn explains something else, that explains something else, that explains something else, that explains something else. An understanding simply comes into view. The sun will never be just the sun again. And you'll understand why people say that minds can expand. It's the only word for it. You won't really know why you're laughing, and that too will be funny. It's like you know a big secret, and it was all just too easy and too obvious in the end. Everything fits. Everything makes crystal clear sense. Everything flows into everything else. And the gaps that a supernatural God used to occupy, with plenty of room to spare, will evaporate. Any shred of religiously instilled fear, guilt or shame will vanish utterly in that second. You never imagined it was possible, only now do you know that it is, just as you know you will never believe a holy book ever again. You'll understand that science will never be complete, but that'll be okay. What else would tomorrow be for? But then comes a kind of anger, in the form of that question. Why didn't anybody tell me? How could it be that the answers were there all along, just a few books away, and I didn't know. Why did I have to waste all those years thinking it was all a mystery? How could I get out of school and not know that the Big Bang almost certainly happened? Why couldn't I live in that universe all along? What else is school for if not to teach kids what we know about how things are? Why weren't people yelling at me, screaming at my stupidity and ignorance? So much is known, and I didn't know. Why didn't anybody tell me? Three times I was there and three times that was the first question asked afterwards. 
At the time I thought the answer was simple. Bad schools, bad teachers. But now I think I know better. It's just not true that nobody told us. The people that knew were telling us all along. The question is not why didn't anyone tell us, but rather why couldn't we hear? And while it's true that the truth can get lost in this world of bullshit and stupidity, I think there's a far bigger problem, even for the courageously honest and rational. This reality we find ourselves in, the Big Bang, the emergence and evolution of life and love from atoms, and those four and a half billion summers on Earth without us. And then we come along, possibly the only minds in the cosmos, contemplating the sunrise for hundreds of millennia, yearning to understand the universe, only to find out, to our surprise, that we are the universe, that our atoms were once at the core of a star, and before that we were the energy cascading from a quantum event that we may never understand. Isn't that the very definition of incredible? literally incredible. And that's the problem. I think that reality itself is simply too unbelievable, too hard to accept on an instinctive level. What an astonishing situation to find ourselves in. Reality is unbelievably unbelievable. So unbelievable that for many religion is actually easier to believe. How unbelievable is that? But there is a way to be free of confusion, and so much of your doubt, and to step into a universe that makes sense, if you want. To paraphrase Einstein, cosmology without atomic theory is lame, and atomic theory without cosmology is blind, and evolution without either of them is only a third of what you need to understand. Anyone who knows anything about how a car works sees a car more completely than a non-mechanic who just sees the surface and so it is with the universe. You won't get it if you only know about the spark plugs and the battery and the steering wheel. That ain't a car. But at some point, as you learn about the major components and their relationships and interdependencies, then, in your mind, you see a car in a way that eyes can't. And if this happens for you with the universe, this is how it will be. I can only say what it's like. It's like you've only ever eaten okay but dry donuts. You know when you encounter a good one. If you are to take one thought away from this video, let it be this. There is an awful lot of jam in the donut of truth. It's like knowing. Or rather like knowing that you probably know. Like you know you thought you knew, but now you know you know. Probably. Would you read that back to me? I'm afraid that might make me sound pompous to your readers. Take out the probably.